Hi traders, can I get sound test please? How are you all today? Good to see you here for the second time today. Okay, sound is good, perfect. Nice to see you all here. We traded today, hopefully you did well. Had a perfectly uh, good trading day today. Hope you enjoyed. And now we're going to spend some time learning together. However, we are not going to talk about day trading. We are actually about to talk about swing trading. It's going to be quite uh, rather uh, quick, I believe. We're not going to talk much, but uh, uh, this is something that I believe every trader should do. Every trader should know and every trader should practice. And we are going to talk today about the three by three trading system and swing trading system, of course. And I do expect that you will do some swing trading alongside uh, day trading. And the rest of the time, once we finish that, is going to be dedicated to day trading if you have any questions or if you, of course, you have any questions about swing trading. So let us uh, just uh, start. Topic of the lesson today is uh, the three by three system, swing system. And the basic idea as I want to uh, talk about, which I want to talk about, is the fact that each and every one of you should be swing trading. Now I know there's a lot of people who do not do swing trading at all, and that is wrong. A trader should not be just one dimensional. You should be multi multi-dimensional. And that means if you're just buying and selling stocks intraday, that's good, that's nice, but that's just one dimensional trader. You need to be doing much more than that. Swing trading is much, much easier than day trading. Swing trader can compensate you for losses that you have while day trading, because as you all know by now, day trading is a very complicated, very hard profession to uh, to survive with. Day trading is a profession that uh, the majority, sadly, uh, do not survive. However, swing trading is something that everybody can do and for a lifetime. So even if you do not make it in day trading, you can definitely try swing trading. You can master swing trading and you can do it very well and make a nice profit um, by swing trading stocks since it's much easier. It's easier mentally, it's easier technically, it's easier by any means. So I would like to talk to you about today about how you should be uh, doing the basic steps for swing trading. Now, if you have any questions, I will appreciate if you will add the Q mark so that I know that you're not just chatting among yourselves. Uh, so I will know that I need to refer to your question. And that would be important to me to notice that because there's uh, so many guys here in the in the trading room. So yeah, thank you, Peter. That's the way I would like you to, <laughs> uh, to ask. Um, can, <laughs> with day trading, you can make make more money. Uh, yes, you can make more money in day trading. In, it is my belief that you can make more money in day trading. That, that's my experience. But let me tell you this. I know a lot of people who are swing trading and are making more money in swing trading because their quantities are much larger than mine. My swing trading quantities is usually around 400 to 800 shares. Usually it will be around 400 shares. So really, compared to my day trading quantity, it's much smaller. The, best, the first question I would, you probably want to ask me is why? I mean, why my quantities in swing trading are lower? Well, first, it, that doesn't have to be, what I'm, the answer I'm going to give you does not necessarily have to be something that uh, you should practice. I don't trust the market. Okay, I don't trust the market. Exactly, the risk. I don't trust the market. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what Trump's going to say between today and tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen worldwide. I don't know which war is going to start tomorrow. So, in my opinion, going to sleep with stocks is very, very risky. Now, if you do that with a very small portion of your money, that is, in my opinion, fine. If your risk, if your risk ability if your, if your mental capability of taking risk is much greater than mine, then fine, go ahead, take larger quantity in swing trading. I appreciate people who can do that. I appreciate the fact that there's a lot of people who can actually go to sleep and feel safe with trading stocks overnight. Personally, I don't. Is that 
normal? I'm not sure it's normal. I'm just saying that I feel bad about taking stocks overnight. So if you can do that, if you can trust the market, and as I mentioned earlier, I don't, then go ahead, do that. So my swing quantities are relatively very small. It compensates my trading. It's a nice thing to do. And it's something that I think each and every one of you should do. Now, I'll, I'll answer some of your questions uh, later. I don't want to answer them all at, uh, uh, during my, my presentation. So keep on ask, uh, qu asking questions. I may answer them as the presentation goes along. But if not, I'll try and come back and answer your questions. So the basic idea of uh, swing trading is, in my opinion, having a system. Well, firstly, you can't trade without a system. It's true for day trading. It's true for swing trading. You must have a system. And if you have a swing trading system in place, you can make money regularly. And that's why I want to talk to you about the 3x3 three three trading system, which is basically simple, but it can be a little bit more complicated. I'll go through some of uh, the basic ideas. So firstly, the 3x3 three three trading system, as every swing system, is based on daily candles. We are watching the candles, we're watching the daily chart of the stock that we would like to trade. And in this case, you're seeing here a stock that started somewhere around 35, 36 and moved all the way close to $40. So this stock is uptrending. Now we're looking to go, in this case, we are only looking to go long. That's naturally true because you know the way I trade. The way I trade intraday trading is always based, well, let me say 99% of my trades will probably be with the trend. So that's true for swing trading also. You watch the daily, you come to a decision that you want to longer stock based on the daily chart. So you look for a few basic parameters. We're not going to learn about technical analysis here in this uh, in this session. We're just going to mention that you look for higher highs and higher lows and you also look for nice technical formation. Now is there a nice technical formation here? Absolutely yes. Look at this amazing resistance point that we're seeing here at $39.70. So we're seeing a stock trending higher, looking great, uh, having some difficulties moving over 39.70. Now, why does it have difficulties moving over 39.70 and what are we interested at? Well, I don't know. There must be a seller at 39.70. Now, who's the seller? Absolutely no idea. Is it institutional? Is it private seller? Usually it's institutional it's because they are 80% of the volume of the stocks that we're trading. Now it's a time to say that we never trade stocks that are... Um, lower than $10. That's true for swing trading too also, because stocks under $10 are not stocks being traded by institutional traders. Therefore, we're only trading stocks over $10 with more than 1 million shares a day. On average, in swing trading, I could, I could sometimes trade stocks which have an average uh, daily volume of around 700,000 shares or so, but I'm, I'm still looking for stocks that are uh, the majority of uh, the holders would be institutional traders. So, uh, these stocks are coming with a set of rules. Now, if you watch a stock, uh, if you watch a stock that is trending higher, you go long. If you watch a stock that is trending lower, you go short. And that's the basic idea. So, swing trading is right for long, is right for short, uh, it's right for uh, um, every direction you pick, as long as you're watching a stock that is trending higher, based again on the daily chart. Is it only right to watch the daily chart? No, I also watch the weekly chart to find some kind of surprises. The daily makes um, the final word, gives a final word, but the weekly gives you some ideas. And sometimes you may say, you may look at the daily and then you look at the weekly and say, oh my God, I would not, I would not touch this one, for example. So there's different uh, examples, but it's mainly based on the daily chart. That means that intraday movements are not as important as daily candles. So that means that we're watching the daily chart and making the decisions based mostly, not only, mostly upon the daily chart. So that's one of the reasons I do not like to see my swing trades in the same trading platform. That's one of the reasons I have a second trading platform that is 
the platform that I use for swing trading. I want to have it on a different platform because if I use the same day trading platform, I would look at my uh, swing trades in the same eyes that I look at my day trades, meaning intraday candles. And that's not the right thing to do. So I'm using a daily chart so I could um, on a different platform because I don't want my swing trades to be with my intraday trades at the same platform. That confuses me. Now you can do the same, you can handle it on the same platform, that depends on you personally. I prefer to have two different platforms for that. Uh, so now we're seeing a stock that has some resistance and again I don't know why the resistance is there but there's something I do know. Whenever the stock is getting very close to 39.70 or actually exactly at 39.70 there's a big seller there. Why did this big seller decide to sell at 39.70? Well obviously that was his target. Usually institutional traders sell at a target which is not the exact price. They don't have like 39.70 as the price but they would have something that says okay we will Will sell in between this and that and they need to use two very specific numbers. Why do they use two very specific numbers? It's because they don't sell it manually. They put the orders into the computers and they say and they tell the computer please start selling at let's say 36 and uh, that would be your bottom uh, price and uh, up to whatever 39.70. In this case when we see that there's a very very clear and it's not always like this you know we're seeing some of some 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 trades that look exactly like this and these are the ones that you'll hear me saying during the trade day trading session oh this is looking like amazing. So there are plenty of those that would look exactly like that 39.70 but that the rarer occasion it's, it's not it's 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 not the, the common occasion. So that whoever it is, institutional trader that sells millions of shares because that's the number of shares that they're selling would have two orders. Maybe one of them is $36 and the other is $39.70 and the system will be will, will be uh, managed in a way um, um, will be managed in a way that is uh, uh, will sell in between these numbers. So I don't know which quantity at which number but it depends on the volume, it depends on the stock behavior. The system is programmed in a way to sell it in between two numbers usually. So the top number in this case is it's quite easy to, to understand, the 3970. So in between this number somebody is selling. Why? Who? What is the quantity? I have absolutely no idea. The only clue I get now is the fact that this, this stock stops exactly at 39.70 and not for once, several times. So that's a stock I would love to take for the long side if it moves over 39.70 cents. Now why I need it to move over 39.70 cents? Because if it moves a cent over that means to me that this programmed software that says okay sell in between let's say 36 and 39.70 is out. Is it always true? No, but it is very very likely that if the stock will move a cent over 39.70 it only means that this whoever they are, this institutional trader, whoever he is just stops selling. That's not always true, but it's true more than 60% of the time. And that's good enough for us traders to click the button and to go long a cent over the resistance point. Now again, I'm not going to talk to you about uh, technical analysis today because again, you know, there's a technical analysis rule that you buy over a resistance and this is a clear resistance so you want to go long over 39.70. The question now is what is your system? How do you do it? How do you manage your trade correctly in a way that is of course gonna bring you the biggest and best profits uh, um, possible. So here's the 3x3 three three system. First you go long over the resistance and that's the stock that we were watching earlier. That's what happened once it crossed the 39.70 and this is not a surprise to me because we see a lot of these things happening. Uh, of course you never know how far it can go and you never trust it but you do know that once it crosses the 39.70 the forces that will lead it to move higher will be initially 
strong. Now look at the volume, the growing volume. And again, this is the basics of technical analysis. So the volume really was growing here, as you can see, once it moved over the resistance point. And once it did, it continued higher. And take a look at this area over here where it started resting for a little bit. This is something that you will see a, long, a lot of time. So usually the first move higher out of the resistance point is, not, don't, do not be surprised, is around 3%. But let's not talk about your target, let's talk about your stop loss. Your stop loss, in my opinion, and that is again the basics of the 3x3 three three system, is always 3%. Now is it, well, always we can talk about sometimes where the 3% is not right. Okay, so it's not always really, because oh, every stock has its own personality, let's call it this way. So every stock has its own, like, you know, when we're trading stocks like MU, AMAT, stocks like that, their personality is 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 very, is, 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 is I mean, the, the, their personality is is you know is 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 uh, the personality that me as a trader I hate to trade. Uh, they are very unvolatile. I don't like trading these stocks because their volatility is very very low. So in the case of let's say MU, uh, you may find that the two percent stop is fine. But this is true for seventy percent of the stocks that we're trading. So that's quite a lot. Most of the stocks that we will be trading, and certainly the one that I pick on my swing trading. Um, weekly picks that you may see or not on YouTube, I'll talk about it later, will always be according to the 3x3 three three swing system. And that means that you will have to put your stop loss at the point of a 3%. Now, the 3% is not accidental. The 3% is something that I was looking for and testing throughout many trading years. And let me just tell you this, if a stock does not go through, uh, sorry, if it does go through resistance and moves up just a little bit and then comes down to the point of 3% where your stop loss, in my opinion, should be, well, at that point you should just realize that that's it. I mean, you failed or I failed or whatever. If you took a stock that you expect that once it goes through resistance will continue moving higher and strongly, just like this one did, and in fact it moves slightly higher and then fails and moves by 3%, seriously, that's it. You probably need to understand that you're out of the game, that this stock that you picked is not going to make it. So don't have, uh, don't consider having your stop loss lower than that. Usually, there's no reason for that because it's usually going to continue. When I say usually going to continue, it means more than 50% of the time. If it hits a 3% stop loss, it's probably going to continue. So there's no reason to do it more. And I tested that with many hundreds, I don't know if thousands, probably thousands of stocks that I've traded, swing traded, and I try to change the number and I put them all in the computer and I try to change the numbers and I'm telling you that 3% is the right point. Now, is it the only point you can consider? No, I would expect you as experienced traders, if you are, if not, use the 3% to look at previous support and resistance. So if you're seeing here support at 2.5%, uh, you can certainly put your stop loss at 2.5 or 2.6. So if you are, again, experienced, you can change it. I do it myself. I don't always use the 3x3. Three three. I, I check, I, I test my success and uh, my, my, my success rate based on the 3%, but sometimes based on previous support, I will change it. I will change it according to the way the stock behaves. I try not to post this kind of stocks. I, pr I try not to post them online because usually, not usually, I'm always going by the 3x3 three by th three by three swing system when I'm uh, checking my results. But I will definitely recommend that if you know better than just you know, the very clear cut three by three and you can find a very clear support, you can use a different number. But let's go through the basic rules here. So the first rule is have a 3% stop loss. The second rule, as you uh, might have already guessed, is uh, the 3% target. 
So my first target is 3% and again this is something that I checked throughout the years. Usually you will see the stock that is breaking out resistance posing at around 3%. Sometimes posing at around 3% means it's going to pause here, come down and maybe become a loser. Sometimes means like this one continuing to go higher forever, whatever. So 3% is where usually you would see a lot of the stocks that I will swing trade pause. There's a lot of reasons for that. One of the reasons is that uh, big buyers usually take for some reason take profits at around 3% so that usually creates some kind of a pause stop stock will usually stop stop there and that would be the place where I would personally uh, take my first profit now can you change that based on against a previous support and resistance of course you can but I believe in my opinion that uh, the 3% target is okay um, and again, based on my experience, that is the place where I think you should do it. Now, people always often ask me, why do I take partials at all? Well, partials is something that I personally do. And again, is it a, one more thing, excuse me. I always take three quarters partial. So there's another three coming in here. And it says three by three gets a little bit more um, support for the threes here. So there's another at the point of the 3%, I will sell three quarters. And again, there's a lot of people who are asking me, why do you take three quarters? Why wouldn't you take just, let's say, half? Well, you can take half. I personally take three because, <laughs> because of my inner demons. I don't know about your demons. My demons is the one that is sitting on my right shoulder and telling me, do you remember the last time that you were up 3% and then you waited a little bit too long and then the stock came down and instead of having a fine winner, you are having now a big loser? Well, yes, I do remember that. And there's, there's the other demon sitting on my left shoulder and this guy saying, well, do you remember the last time that you were up 3%, you sold three quarters or whatever, and then the stock continued moving up like another 10%. Yes, I remember that case too. So in order to let them go, I actually tell the one who's sitting on my right shoulder, you say it's going to come down. Okay, here's your three quarters. Leave me alone. The one here that says it's going to continue. Okay, you've got one quarter now. Let's go ahead. I mean, prove yourself. So I'm getting rid of the demons. You know, traders, when we're trading, it doesn't matter if you're day trading or swing trading. One of the most important things, of course, is to get rid of your demons. If you are fighting all the time, if you have some psychology issues, then that war turns into a losing game and you need to get away of your fears and of your greed. Once you sell, sell three quarters, you get rid of both. You, read, you get rid of your fear, you get rid of your greed. Because just quarter size is not enough for having too much greed. Selling three quarters mean you're not gonna have a loser. You're just not gonna have a loser. So the next rule is, as you just sold three quarters at a 3% profit, your stop loss, which was earlier at 3%, now moves up to your entry point. Now moves up to your entry point. Meaning, if the last quarter is gonna come down to your entry point, you still have in your pocket the profit of the three quarters. The profit you may have had from holding to the last quarter is now gone but you never take out what you put in your pocket. That's another very important part of taking a partial. That means I put something in my pocket. Once I put something in a pocket, a very important rule in day trading or swing trading is I never take it out. That means whatever I put in my pocket, I try, I don't always succeed. I try not to take out. So the last quarter may continue moving higher and I would have what I would call in my swing trades a free trade. And all of my swing trading stocks are free trades once I got my three 
my three quarters partial because I only have three, uh, one quarter left and it's riding and I can never lose money. Well, of course I can. For example, if I get a huge gap down. But that's one good reason to have the three quarters partial too. For example, if a stock is getting to your target, assuming you had the chance to sell three quarters and let's say it continued moving higher and all of a sudden gaps down by 9%. Now, why did I say 9%? Because 9%, first, it's a huge gap. Second, if you made a 3% profit on three quarters, mm, if I'm not mistaken, if, it, if it's, I mean, mathematically, if I'm not mistaken, if it comes down by 9%, uh, nothing happened. I mean, 9% under your entry point. So you're still at zero. So even a big gap, could take me out of the game and sometimes yeah you may have a big gap while you're still in the stock and um, you didn't get your three percent partial that's one good reason not to get into swing trades before uh, or at least one day before uh, announcements so if you have quarterly announcement check out uh, let's say in uh, um, uh, I mean whatever website I usually I, I usually use Yahoo Finance check out that you don't have uh, earning announcements in the next few days you can check it out very easily and then and then just uh, and then just don't trade the stock or trade it and move out before the day of the announcement that's also very very important and uh, so you don't take any uh, unnecessary risk uh, that depends again on your strategy the way that you're trading so what happens to the last quarter? The last quarter's target is usually, in my case, anywhere between 6 to 12%. And that depends on a lot of variations, what the market's doing. Is the market's uptrending? Is um, the stock looking good? Again, support, resistance, a lot of other, a lot of different other things that you can definitely use if you're a little bit exper experienced. And that is something that is quite easy to manage the last quarter because again, you can just you, you just can't lose money with the last quarter size. So again, uh, that's a very very simple way of trading. And you know, if you take a look at uh, what happened in the last uh, nine years, actually, let's take a look at uh, the S and P daily. Look at the S and P daily now. We're seeing the market moving higher. That's that's the last year, of course. I can I can show you the last nine years, and that's like oh my god, look at that. The market's trending higher, and <laughs> that's not even nine years. The market's trending higher like crazy. Just look at the last six months or more than that. So, when the market's trending higher the way it is, and you're concentrating on stocks that are trending higher too. Okay, that are trending higher too. And I can definitely talk about some of the trades that I took uh, recently, like um, WB, I posted this one, what, last week or the week before? I think a uh, week before, uh, WB. So WB, as you can see here, is trending higher. If you look at the weekly, it certainly is trending higher for the last uh, few years. So if you t if you pick a stock that is trending higher and comes with a nice technical formation, that was the place where I took it last week. Yes, it was last week. That was the place where I took it last week for a swing trade. I posted this one, this swing trade on my weekly swing review. If you're not familiar with that, I'll talk about it soon. So there's a nice combination here of a stock that is trending higher a very nice technical formation. You see that there's the cup and the small handle here. And once the stock moved to a new high, it's moved over 7%. So over 7%, that's enough for my 3% partial. Stop remains at the, the last quarter at the entry point. And now you've got yourself a free trade. So you see it continued moving higher, pulled back, didn't get to the entry price because if it would touch the entry price, that would mean the last quarter would have been out. It's not. And hopefully it will continue moving higher forever. I'm not going to stay forever because I'll put my money back on something that would look even better than that. So once I reach more than, I'm looking for 12% approximately in this trade. Once I reach approximately 12%, and again, that depends on the market, what the market is going to do and so on, then I will be satisfied with WB. I'm not yet satisfied with WB. So uh, three quarters are out, one quarter remains. And again, if you take a look at the S&P 500, it's trending higher. If you if you look at the S&P, and again, if the S&P moves higher, and the stock that you're taking for a swing trade is trending higher too. So 
both are, I mean, the S&P is certainly helping your stocks. And you have a stock that comes with a nice technical formation like WB. And let me go back to my slides. And you always have a 3% stop loss. And you always have a 3% target. I want you to think about this 3x3 three three system. And please, please, please tell me how is it possible? Is it any in any way possible that if you will take the next 100 trades, I'm not talking about the next 5, if you will take the next 10 trades, 20 trades, 50 trades, 100 trades, is it in any way possible that you will lose money? In my opinion, absolutely not. Is it complicated as day trading and requires a lot of attention and a lot of knowledge? No. Is it simple to do? Yes. Is there any way you can lose money if you follow the trend of the market as long as the market is trending? No. There is no way that you can take this system and you can lose money. There's just no way. So I'm getting back to that system and I'm getting back to the basic idea of swing trading. Guys, it's not easy to succeed in day trading. It's much, much easier to succeed in swing trading. And the 3x3 three three system is going to help you tremendously. It's a simple system to use. It's a simple system to follow. And you can really do very, very well. Let me show you just one last thing. These are the results for 2016 because I did not make my results for 17 yet. This is, these are my swing results for 2016. Now, you know what? Before I show you the end number, the end result here, you may already know that if you're trading with me, I won't take you to just for a short visit uh, to my YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar much with my YouTube channel, there's where I post my swing picks every week. So you're going to have every week a swing pick video, which looks like that. You see, that's my market weekly review. Uh, for December 24th, so that's just yesterday, and I used and and at that and that and that one, I I used in order to, sorry, each and every review like that comes with two stocks, and I'm posting my stocks, my two weekly picks on my, on this market review. It just comes with a market review and two weekly picks, and I always discuss the entry points. And the exit points, meaning if I if we lost money last week, if we gained money last week, it's always discussed. As you know, transparency is the most important part in our trading room, and it goes for swing trading as well. So if you're not watching this, just sign up for our channel. I'll post um, I'll post uh, the link here for the YouTube channel. Here it is. So just sign up for this channel. And uh, just, you know, if you're on YouTube, uh, if you're going to see this in YouTube, you can click on the sign up channel and you can do that. So here's the swing results. And these are all done only by the first three quarters. I did not manage here just because it's a bit complicated for me to do that. I did not manage the last quarter. So it's only the, fir the, th the first three quarters, uh, which means the results were much better than what you're about to see. So as you can see here, that means that there was a loser here in ITC. These are winners, the green ones, there are the red ones are losers. And there's, uh, again, if I go back on this, you will see that there were uh, 63 uh, trades uh, at that year, that was 2016, uh, success rate was 66.7%. We had 42 winners, 21 losers, uh, 63 trades, and a yearly and annual gain of 63%. The market did in that year 9.5%. So it's certainly much, much better than what the market did. And 2017 swing picks are going to be coming soon. So again, um, having a, f a very solid swing system is something that I think each and every one of you should have. Uh, again, uh, you should have a system that is working 
for years and keep on developing it. It not necessarily has to be the exact thing that, as I just described, you can make it better. You can make it uh, the right si system for you. You can change it in a way that uh, uh, you will adapt it to your needs. Is it, does it have to be exactly three quarters? No. Does it have to be exactly 3%? Not exactly. Uh, do you always have to take the stocks that are uh, as volatile as and, and volatile enough or for 3% or you can take more volatile stock or less volatile stock, you can do whatever you like. Just start with a 3x3 three three and then adapt it to your needs. But the 3x3 three three really works very, very nice and I believe that you should, uh, you should follow it. Um, any questions, uh, I'll, I'll read your questions right now and I'll answer them. So just at the same time, you can read the summary. Uh, the basic idea again is to set your stop loss at 3%, your first three quarters partial at 3%, raise your stop to the entry level, sell the remaining at uh, 12. I, I usually do it anywhere between 6 to 12 and improve the system by adding technical rules where applicable um, and yes you need a system just one last thing and I'm not going to get into details here uh, but you know I use the Colmex trading platform and with the Colmex plat trading platform you can actually let's say you're going long 400 shares whatever stock it's gonna be this time it's the S&P you can use the implement range meaning you can use an order to go with a stop limit order. So you can have an order to go long at a price, which means over this or that price, which is like in my swing pick, and that could be done pre-market. You can use the stop price as the entry price, the limit price over here, the target price, sorry, the target price if you go long here at the high range, the stop loss price, the 3% here, use the implement range, button here and click buy if you go long so that will automate everything and that means that the only thing you need to do is spend like 10 minutes you know what one hour a week swing trading one hour a week swing trading use an automated order to go long use an automated order to go short but you can use an automatic order with a 3% target 3% stop loss then come and change it maybe you can change it for you know before it gets to the 3% uh, sell only 300 out of 400 or use two different orders one with 300 shares one with 100 shares one without um, with 3% uh, stop loss only and one without a target you can do this, that all automated and again you only need approximately one hour a week, so please, please, swing trade. I'm getting back to your questions now. Let's go to the first ones. Wow, there's many of them. Okay. How to estimate uh, if the target 3% or more possible in this stock I want to trade? Are there some signals to look for? Uh, most possibly. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Theodore, uh, you need to look for the stock itself. Yes, that's technical analysis. Just look at technical analysis. And I'm, I'm not going to get into technical analysis here, but certainly it's just technical analysis. Yes, you can look for better, uh, for better and clearer results. Uh, for swing trading, Peter asked for swing trading. You also uh, check the miracle ball or how you called the S&P 500 movements. Yes, as I mentioned, you base you are based on the daily of the S&P, Peter. However, that was a good question actually, uh, and I didn't mention that. You can make you can you can you can make this swing trading system much better. As I mentioned, you can use automated orders. But and I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to use automated orders, but if if you want to get if you want to get a little bit more sophisticated, look for your swing trades intraday and look at the swing trade and say, okay, this one just went through my target. That's the entry price, but the market is crashing now. I'm not going to buy it because the market is crashing now. Now it's going to be quite rare that your swing trade is going to move over your target when the market's moving down, but you can in fact use intraday information in order to make a decision. I personally do that. I do not. I do not show my results based on that because, you know, if I'll show my results based on that and I will say in the week, in next week report, I will say, well, I didn't get to that trade because it was a loser, but I didn't get to it because the market at that time was moving 
moving uh, uh, down. Well, if I will say that online in YouTube, uh, <laughs> it's not going to end up with a smile. So the thing is, I'm always managing my picks exactly according to the three by three. That's how I will measure my success and uh, my failure rate. But sometimes I personally do something which is a little bit different and you can do that too based on intraday moving. I certainly do that. How many cents uh, do you go, uh, Blazon asks, how many cents do you go over the resistance? One cent, one cent, one cent over the resistance. You buy one cent of the resistance. Guys, that's the basics of day trading and swing trading. You always buy one cent over. Don't try to watch the stock and say, well, prove to me, okay, you just went over one cent over the resistance. Well, can you please do another three cents and I promise I'm going to buy you. Well, you just moved three cents over the resistance. Well, you know what? Let's show another five cents. Just, you know, convince me I'm right. You are never convinced and you will never be convinced. Never wait. Always buy exactly one cent higher. That's the difference between a professional trader and a novice trader. Uh, Harris asks, uh, Mayor, what's your regular swing trading share size? I mentioned that earlier, Harris. That is uh, anywhere between 400 to 800, but it depends on the stock. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Um, sorry, website, do you check announcements? Yes, I do check announcements. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, I go to Yahoo Finance. Mercury explains the rule number three once more. I'm not sure I understand which one now, Steve. If I didn't answer, please ask it again. Uh, trade ask, uh, in the daily report PDF that I get in the mail, is there a New York swing strategy? Is that same? Well, okay. Uh, trade, uh, um, the New York swing strategy is based on Shlomo's system. So Shlomo Cooper is the one who's, with the, who's managing the New York swing strategy. Uh, you can follow his way of swing trading, which is fine. And again, that's just another swing trading system. And that's, again, fine. Mm, Lola, uh, what is your daily report PDF? Never received this one. Um, it comes with the daily email that you're supposed to be receiving from us. I'm not sure it comes with the PDF though, but if it if you do not get it, please email your account manager and you're supposed to be to be getting uh, the um, daily email and weekly email. Uh, Sean ask, I would like to learn how to use, uh, but again, as I mentioned, you can go to my YouTube channel and there's a video coming up and it comes up on Facebook and everywhere. So I would like to learn how to use range option to the trade window. Oh, okay, Sean, that, that's what, what I was just explaining here. That was the uh, range order. I didn't go into details, I know, but I think you'll find a video explaining that on my YouTube channel. You certainly should. And if not, we'll do that in the training room. Thank you, Cesario. Uh, Harris, uh, what's your regular swing share? I answered that. What platform broker do you use for swing trading? I use the same platform, Boris. I use the Colmex platform. It's very, uh, for me, it's very, um, I mean, it, I, I think for swing trading, it's, I think it's the best platform for day trading, but it's also great for swing trading, especially because of this implement range button that you're seeing here. And again, I can use a stop limit order, and that means I can automate everything. I can watch a stock and say, okay, if it moves over this limit, I want to buy, but not more than, that would be the stop limit order, stop price here, limit here. Uh, the target price would be here if you go long. Uh, stop price would be here. That would be my perfect solution. Um, you can use this order to place, you can place orders pre-market. You cannot trade pre-market, but you can place the order at pre-market time. And that means that you don't need to spend your time waiting for the stock to trigger if you're just too busy and you do not want to spend that time into day. Um, did I miss any of your questions? So just, you know, just... 
cut and paste them again so I can just go through them. I think I may have missed some, right? Okay, let me see if I missed anything. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, Michael Aska, if support is say 350, how far below the hole or half dollar mark should I set the stop loss exactly 350? I usually set it uh, like three cents below. Yeah, like 347. That would be where I would set it, Michael. Um, depends, but usually I would I would use anywhere between one to three cents. Um, Lola, may can we replay this webinar? Yes, this webinar. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to record it. I did record it. Um, well, actually, no, I did not forget to record it. I, I did record it for YouTube uh, purposes, and I didn't know exactly when I'm gonna when I'm going to edit this video, and if at all I'm going to edit this video. Now, since I forgot to record it to the trading room, I guess I don't have a choice. Okay, so yes, it is recorded, and it's going to be playing. I think. I um, may put it on YouTube or something. I think I will. <laughs> I don't have a, a choice now, do I? Uh, do shorts, do shorts in swing trading have a time limit? Okay, time limit, time limit. That's also important, Boris. Time limit. Uh, okay, let's say a stock does not trigger. What is my time limit? Usually, that would be worst case scenario. I mean, I don't know. If it's worst or best. Uh, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Usually, I would not take there for more than two weeks. So, if a stock does not trigger in two weeks, again, I'm reminding you. I'm looking at the daily chart. If it does not trigger in two weeks. I'm out. Now, what happened if it triggered and I'm uh, meaning I'm, I'm out, meaning I'm not going to take the trade. Usually, if it doesn't trigger by two weeks. Now, but that is something personal you have to decide. You can decide yourself. Myself, usually I don't. But uh, what happened if I, the stock did trigger and I'm into a trade and the trade does not get to my target? That's another good question. I don't know if that was your question, but if that wasn't, I'll answer it anyway. If the stock triggered, and you're on the way to your target, but you did not reach your target, usually I would move out by the end of the week. I do not like to go to sleep overnight at the weekend with a stock that did not reach my target. If it reached my target, fine. If it did not reach my target, I don't care if it's a small gain or a small loss, certainly not did not reach 3% target or 3% stop loss, somewhere, somewhere in between profit to loss. I don't care where it is. I do not hold on to the stock over the weekend. Personally, I don't. But that has to do with you. My thoughts about using options, you can definitely use options for swing trading, but there's you know, you lose five cents in, five cents out. I don't usually do that, Andrew. And if you have enough buying power, please don't do it yourself. But you can. Do short swing trading have a time limit, like time restriction, shorting? No, no. Um, I, well, no, depending. Oh, now I, maybe I now I understand your question. Sorry. I think your question was different about shorts. Sorry, I didn't answer that, Boris. Okay. Okay. Um, some brokers may limit you. The one I'm using, I'm using again, I'm using Colmex, no limits. But some brokers may limit you, check with your broker. Some brokers may limit you on, they have some shorting restrictions. Uh, our limit range orders will execute at the pre-market. No, it will not execute at the pre-market, absolutely not. Blazon, it will only execute at real market time. At real market time, not at pre-market or after market. Could you please explain how to read the level two? At time says mm, we can do that. We can do that. We can do that. We can do uh, certainly. We can do a mentorship sales about that. Uh, I will do Cornelis. So just for swing entry on Monday. I enter on Monday and exit on Friday. No, if I if I if I did not reach my target, yes, I usually do that. You know, I, I also do more than that, Blazon. For example, let's say the stock did not reach my target. Let's say it reached two and a half percent. Would I go to sleep with two and a half percent 
uh, over the weekend without taking a partial. That would be stupid. That would be stupid. I don't do that. I would take my partial at 2.5%. I wouldn't go through a long weekend, and a long weekend means a lot of news. You never know what's coming up at the, at the weekend. So uh, the longer the, <laughs> the period between your trade and the next trading day, the more bad news could come, or good news. But I'm afraid of the bad news, of course. So I would take my partial. You would sometimes see me. It happened last week. It certainly happened last week. You would see me talking about a swing trade that... Uh, moved up by 2.7%. Really, you will find a swing trade that moved up by 2.7% and I said, no, I did not take my partial. No, I'm waiting for next week. Maybe it's going to reach my partial next week or not. I do not have a winner. And sometimes it comes down and you have a loser. But no, I certainly did take my partial. That's just that I did not say that in my swing report. Why? Because again, people would look at it as if I was maybe trying to cheat because I always mention that I'm trading according to the 3 by 3 rule and I'm trying to at least report my trades according to the book and yes if it moves up by 2.7% not reaching my 3% target and the weekend is closed certainly they take your partial but I'm still going to manage my trades in YouTube based on that Uh, Mike, you didn't use um, you didn't use um, a question mark, so I didn't see your question. But GE, I, I'm not going to get in specific trades right now, and still need to answer some questions about the system here. Will it show? And, and again, if you didn't use the question mark, I'm sorry, I just didn't see your questions, so you can keep on asking them. I'm still here. Will you show the active orders in all the windows if you want to cancel after a week or so? Will it show? Uh, yes, the active orders will be there. You can you can definitely use that orders to cancel them or to edit them or whatever. Do you recommend a breakout? Do you want to buy breakouts, say 351 or buy a dip near support 330 and then wait, hopefully, to cost 350? No, I don't do this kind of thing. Certainly not with $3 stocks. I would not buy dips on swing trading. No, Michael. I use very specific technical analysis rules, usually breakouts or breakdowns. Yes, Chazaria, I'm using some some rules, but I'm certainly am bending the rules. I don't think that uh, a trader should be very, very solid with the rules. There is a big amount of artistic uh, part of trading, and that applies for swing trading too, not only day trading. But again, if I am talking about my swing trades, I'll always talk about the 3% target. Now I'm going back to see if I missed any of your questions. Uh, Marvin, I see you ask a question without Q mark. Uh, what is the price jump at stop loss? Will you lose money? What if the price jumps to, at your stop loss? Okay, I would definitely use hard stops with my swing trades. So if the price jumps to my stop loss, I will be out. I use hard stops. If I'm watching Marvin, if I'm watching live, my stock getting close to the stop loss, I will cancel my hard stop. If, if, if that is the case, if, I'm in the, if, if there is a case where I'm live watching my swing trade right now and it comes close to my stop loss, I will cancel my stop loss and manage it manually. But since most of my uh, swing trades are based on, uh, are based on uh, automated uh, orders, stop loss orders, then yes, I will move out. It's not like my day trading. And of course, you know, you have quite a lot of uh, uh, error because you move into a trade and you have a 3% target, a 3% stop loss. So, so it, it's, it, you can allow, in that case, use a hard stop. And yes, if it moves quickly to that point, I'll be out with a loss. And sometimes it happens, but with 3% is not as, it, 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 it does not happen as often as it happens in intraday when you have like a 20 cent move. Uh, Armando, I see you ask a question without a queue. I'm trying to answer that. Uh, where do you find a stock of trader to 
uh, stock to trade at momentum during the day. Uh, yeah, I use the top 20, but that's for intraday trading and try to concentrate on swig trading here. What is the leverage on swig trading? Well, that has to do with your broker, Harris. Um, with Colmex, I can tell you it's the same as almost every other every other uh, broker. It's one two to one, which means if you have ten thousand dollars in your account, you can swing trade with twenty. If you're trading the if you with the funded accounts program, then you have twenty percent. Meaning, if you have a two hundred and forty thousand dollar account. It works a little bit different in that case. You can use 20% of that to swing trade, which I think is right. I don't think you should use more than that. Armando, you ask another question here, I see. Uh, what do you use to find a stock to trade for momentum? During, oh, we talked about that, yeah. If I missed any of your questions, again, sorry, it's a little bit hard for me to go back. Uh, please just, you know, um, please just rewrite them. Okay. Uh, Laksham, you have a question. Is it safe to swing trade with a fund account? Sure, it is, and I think you should do it. But don't go over 20%. Don't go over, if you won't go over 20%, it would be safe as long as you don't go over 20%. Don't go over 20% of your account. That's it. And that should be safe. And of course, start with small numbers. What percent of um, what percent of portfolio you, you recommend should be swing versus day trading? Well, that's that's a hard uh, question, Arvind. I I personally I personally, as I mentioned, trade let's say anywhere between 400 to 800 shares, but that's a very small percentage of my account. So I don't know. I I have to come out with an answer to that. I didn't think about that. Uh, do you use earnings into swing plays? Um, no, I don't use earnings. I I try to uh, I try to not to take swing trades into earnings. So that's the way I use them. I use earnings. <laughs> I use earnings knowledge not in order not to take swing plays. Unless I already gone came to my three percent percent partial. If I took my three percent partial, I may take the last quarter to. Uh, to the earning reports, but I don't know if I'm going to take it if it's only up 3%. Maybe I took a 3% partial, the stock is already up by 8%, then maybe I'll take it. If not, I probably won't. If if price uh, comes to the hard stop during uh, pre or after market, no. No, you don't get executed, and no. You do not make your decision according to pre market or after market. How do you scan select stocks for swing trading? I can tell you, but I'll have to kill you afterwards, Belazen. Uh, any scanner to... Yeah, I use Finviz. Um, you know, the fact is, uh, we use Finviz. Uh, let me write down www. That's the one we use. Now, when I say we use, let me tell you this. Let me, you know what? Let me tell you a secret. <laughs> Do you guys like secrets? Um, about 50% of my swing trades uh, are not ones that I, I, I choose. Actually, I choose them all. But the basic uh, search results are being done by some of my uh, some of my colleagues so i have some people in tradenet who are searching for swing trades uh, one of them you know him is shlomo uh, i'm getting every week the results of a few uh, swing trades usually around 10 to 20 i add one or two of my own and then i from the whole 20 swings that i see i I go through each and every one of them and I pick them. Now they they all come from, uh, most of them come from Finviz results and the way to um, to um, uh, to use Finviz is, is, is not very complicated. Again, it's based on a lot of things, but there's a lot of different parameters that we're using there and I, I, I'm just not going to go through it right now or any time actually. If you were 
to plan to buy breakouts at 1001 okay uh, would it be better to use stop or stop limit certainly stop limit order certainly if, uh, we're talking about swing trading now right certainly stop limit order you never know what's coming in real time so definitely stop limit order And that depends, and the limit will be dependent, Michael, on the volatility of the stock. So again, the personality of the stock that you're trading. No, you can't go below 5% of, uh, of your account, Marvin, but you can definitely take 20% of your account size in order to swing trade. Yes, that's a stop loss. Thank you, David, for answering them, answering that. Once your swing trade is triggered, how long on average days do you complete it? Usually, Steve, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that would be like uh, two or three days until you get to your uh, swing target, which is 3%. Just two, three, four days and one more thing you just reminded me uh, let's say uh, you have a swing trade executed on on Friday would you go long on Friday usually I tell you no I mean personally I wouldn't do that if you'll hear my swing report the next few days you will you will hear me saying yes it's a valid trade because it is a valid trade but if if you ask me the way I behave the way I trade I wouldn't take for example a swing trade on Friday because usually the chance for me to get a partial um, on Friday is very very low so it w I may get to my target on Monday but then again I'll have to go with a full size um, over the weekend and I hate that use Finivis every day good it's a, it's a very nice platform if you read your contract did you sign if you say more than 20% if your account equity they can close your account that's true they can they never do that David <laughs> but they can uh, can you please share the risk well they never did it till now I don't know what's next can you please uh, share the search criteria hmm. uh, based on the thing is with search criteria is that there's many 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 search criteria there so we use several swing criteria several swing research researchers and they're all different out of each and every one you can get 10 20 stocks and the and until I, I get 10 to 20 but the guys who are working on the 10 to 20 usually go through hundreds probably 200 uh, not now with the trailing stop I mean it's not something that we'll talk about today uh, do you look at the chart before deciding to go long short on the entry point no I do not I do not unless I'm open with a stock and watching it intraday and then it's just you know uh, 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 unless for some reason and I don't usually because usually as I mentioned I have automated order for swing trading but if I do watch it if I'm in front of my screen and you know I'm only there for one and a half hour I usually come back later but it's not that I'm always watching it once it's triggering so usually I don't if I'm swing trading I see those trades in my comments platform because I have one account are you not seeing them? No, I'm seeing them on a different platform. Yes, I'm using a different account. Trade exactly, second account. Like you, I have a second account with money deposited and so on. For new traders, should we divide our time between swing trading? Yes, you should. One two hours swing trading per week. Yes, you should. Um, do you say swing trading is less risky? Absolutely less risky. Yes, Lola, absolutely. I would definitely say that uh, especially if you're busy, doesn't matter what you're doing, you have your own job. Um, let's say for the sake of argument, whatever it is, you work for a company um, uh, and you don't have enough time or... Um, 
and you just can't day trade every day or you practice yoga every day <laughs> and um, whatever you do and you don't have enough time for sw for day trading then just you know use the one or two hour every week to swing trading and that definitely will pay out maybe I missed it but if you take 20% of your account to swing trade 20% based on the package pain oh come on that's too complicated for me come on Greg mathematics is this time of the day after a trading day seriously whoa I'm sweating let me try and read it again <laughs> Uh, take twenty percent of your account to swing trading. Okay, is it twenty percent based on the package pays or the level? Oh, for example, pop package account. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. That, that's, that's mathematics. Great, come on, not today. Sorry. How do you? Do you use hard stop or is the wait? Is that a trade window setting? Hmm. Mervin, well, you need to know how to use a hard stop, but we can't go through that right now. Well, UPO, you don't, you never swing trade the UPO. UPO is a crazy thing to trade. You don't, you don't swing trade that. Guys, I think we should call it a day. Thank you very much for being here with me today and I um, hope that was uh, interesting and if you have any more questions maybe keep them to the next time that we meet on the mentoring session or whenever on the trading room or something like that uh, or ask the other mentors I'm sure they're going you're going to get some answer um, I hope uh, that uh, swing trading idea just you know is something that you will consider I think you should. I think everybody should swing trade. I think that compensates for a lot of losses that you may have in day trading because there's a lot of people who are uh, trying to survive day trading because certainly I believe day trading is better than swing trading. But swing trading is again, as I mentioned earlier, simpler, more straightforward, um, easier to do. And um, if you happen to not to be successful in day trading you should definitely consider uh, swing trading anyway not only if you're day trading I mean do both just don't be one-dimensional traders okay thank you very much guys and um, see you next time